Welcome back to Base Sunday. Well, it's got to be one of the most difficult topics to discuss with your children, drugs and alcohol. Well, now there is a guide for parents who have kids who are addicted. Frequent guest and author Charles Rubin has a new empowering book. It is called Don't Let Your Kids Kill You. It's a pretty good title. I want to say good morning to Charles. Good morning. Good morning. Now, this is a different type of book, and you said you believe it's the only one on the market that has this perspective, and it's for parents. It is for parents. Uh, I want to stress that this is a book that helps parents. The book is not new, by the way. It's 15 years old, um, but it continually sells, and it's a worldwide bestseller because of the problems out there with kids on drugs. So, um, uh, you know, what parents do is they feel it's their fault and so on, and they take it on to themselves, and they think they did this to the child, and really, basically, they have not. It's a societal problem, not a parental problem. If we can understand that, we can understand that everybody's a victim. The parent, the child, society in general. And but, as even, such, but even as a parent, I mean, it, that's got to be the, the hardest thing to grasp. Is, because the first place you're going to go, and the first thing you're going to do is blame yourself. Where did I go wrong as exactly. a parent? How did I lead this child astray? Yes. But that's, that's why I want to correct that uh, perception. Because, uh, you know, um, it's not really true. The, uh, the kids are out there, the drugs are out there, and kids want to be popular with their, um, their peer groups. So th what they will do is they will, they will segue into drugs. They'll segue from being beautiful little babies and mm -hmm. little children into these hulking, really monstrous kind of people when they're on drugs. It's not the child. The child's fine. It's the drugs that are within the child that are creating the problem. So what do you do then as a parent in dealing with such a huge problem? I mean, it's got to be, it's, it's got to take over your world. You take care of yourself. From your example of saying, I'm not going to fall through the cracks, which I did, you know, but then I crawled back up and, you know, um, and uh, uh, I was managed to get back my career, which had been destroyed, my health, my relationships with other people, and inter my, uh, the interests that, you know, that were, that were important to me. And I was able to uh, revitalize myself. Um, from that experience, I knew that uh, it sent a message to my um, children that I was going to be fine. If they didn't want to be fine, that was up to them. But how do you let that go? I mean, that's got to be the toughest. You have to do it. You have to do it. You have to harden your heart, and you have to make a, a decision that you're going to be, you're going to do everything you can for yourself. That's what the whole thrust of the book is about. Um, it's also understanding that um, by doing this, you become a role model, maybe for the first time, because in. Uh, in our society there's such permissiveness and we give so much to our children and we want them to be happy we want them to be healthy and we forget ourselves in the process mm -hmm. um, we don't we don't have the same you know emphasis on our own lives but if you get that emphasis back it works wonders for the child and so there are such subjects in the book as for instance do you really think you did this to your child and um, uh, expectations and why it's dangerous to have them. Mm -hmm. um, the, the, the book is um, kind of a Bible for, for people who want to recover from their children. And my addiction was my, the, that, the, the, those kids were my addiction. And they become your addiction. They became but my I, addiction. I guess my question is, you know, even if you're taking care of yourself, are you saying that you don't get involved uh, with your child who is clearly in trouble? You do everything you possibly can. You get them into rehabs. You do everything you possibly can. But at the same, time, at the same you time, you've got to take care of yourself. If they're not going to... Everybody has a growth pattern. If they haven't grown into that recovery stage, then they're, never, they're not going to do it through your... In your your attempts, they'll do it at their, at their own time during their in, when they're ready. When they're ready, and meanwhile, you may be dead <laughs> by the time they're ready. You may be dead, so you don't want to do that. Uh, all lives are precious. Your 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 uh, connection with your these these individuals is probably stronger than any any uh, 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 relationships that you have. Uh, and it's very painful. It's extraordinarily painful. And I would imagine yeah. extraordinarily difficult to and for difficult. Too. But if you take care of yourself, and you know, again, the book is for the parent. That's right. It's for you. Your recovery. Parents have to recover, mm -hmm. and um, and and the book has sold uh, thousands and thousands, and has helped thousands of people. Um, I never intended it to be 
even out there, my agent was the one who insisted to be um, out there. I wrote it for myself. Well, good thing it is because it's helping, I'm sure, parents, thousands of parents out there. So I want to say thank you to Charles Rubin for sharing his thoughts on his book. Thank you. And hopefully empowering other parents out there. If you'd like to purchase a copy of Charles' book, it is called Don't Let Your Kids Kill You. You can go to innerlight.org. It's also available, though, at your local bookstores as well as online. All right, stay tuned. We've got much more coming up here on Bay Sunday.